This tutorial video will help you understand how to complete research activity number four, summarizing sources. This research activity helps you understand the skill of summarizing sources, a skill that is necessary for understanding the sources you are reading and reporting on those sources to a teacher or a professor. So let's go. First of all, your objective is to write a summary of a source that includes its main idea, supporting evidence, author, and use in a research project. Um, the directions are fairly simple, but you must start with a web resource. So make sure that you have found a web resource for your project. In this case, for English Aid at this time, that is the Speech Research Project, Speaking for What's Right. So you should have a web resource available and ready to go. You can see that I have my link down here to a web resource on the Cold War. So I have my web resource. I scan through it. I see all the text. I understand what this is just very briefly. This is an encyclopedia-like entry on the Cold War. OK, so I have my link. And I must answer a series of questions. I must identify who the author and or publisher of the source is with an explanation of that identity. That means you must determine who is responsible for this page. I'll show here. Scrolling up to the bottom, I see that this is history, and this is a history.com web resource. We've discussed in class the different types of resources, and history.com is published by the History Channel. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see that history.com is published by A&E Television Networks. That means this is a publication of a television station. So, in my research activity, I will explain that the publisher is A&E Television Networks. I listed none as an author because I don't see an author on the entry. Now, if you're looking for an author, you would find an author either toward the beginning of the entry or toward the end. I check both and I don't find an author. Therefore, I leave it blank. Well, actually, I write the word none. Be sure that you're filling out these first two blanks, author and publisher. If you're looking for the author, look at the bottom of the entry or the top. If you're looking for the publisher, often you will find that scroll down all the way to the bottom right next to a copyright date. If you're having trouble finding that, go to the home page. As we see in history.com, A&E Television Networks is listed down at the bottom, and we see a lot of information about them. That's the easy way to find what we need. The next question is the main idea or purpose of the resource. So, looking at it again, as we scan through, we can see that this is an entry on the Cold War in sort of a, in an encyclopedia format. This first section gives me a general discussion of what the Cold War was overall. Later, I get contents of different entries about the Cold War. I see Cold War containment, Cold War the Atomic Age, the Cold War extends to space. So, in answering the next question, what is the main idea or purpose of the resource? I can write that this website discusses the major events in the Cold War from 1946 to 1999. This is a single sentence entry, and it simply states what the article or web page is trying to do. It's trying to inform the audience about the major events in the Cold War. My next question is evidence. What is the supporting evidence used to develop the main idea? And at this point, you should look into the entry for a little bit more detail. As I scroll through my entry, I can see that it seems to present a number of quotations. It seems to present a number of research facts. I don't see any citations. I don't see any references to other documentation but I do see quite a lot of those research facts and quite a lot of quotations. So, in answering my question about the supporting evidence, I can write, the website provides facts and quotations, but no citations. Its links primarily take reader to other history web pages, but those links are abundant and relevant. What does that mean? That means that I have a number of links. If I wanted to learn more about President John F. Kennedy, for instance, it would take me to the John F. Kennedy page, once again, in history.com.
So as I scroll through my entry, I get a sense of what the evidence is. The evidence seems to be very internal. That means that every link takes you to another page in history.com. It's not making reference to anything outside of the website. That could be good, it could be bad. It depends upon how much we rely on history.com, but let's not worry about the reliability for a moment. Let's just worry about describing what exactly is going on. And once again, I can say that it provides facts and quotations, but no citations and so on. When you are answering this question, you should discuss what type of evidence it is and whether or not it provides external links to other sources. Last is the support provided for this research project. This is where you will think about your own project and how this source relates. It's not enough to say that this Cold War page is an entry on the Cold War. What you must complete the entry by doing is addressing how it relates to your research project. Ask yourself, how do you intend to use this? Where in the project do you think you will use this? In my answer, I state, this page will help me discuss the general background of the Cold War leading up to the specific discussion of Reagan's visit to Germany in 1987. My speech is Reagan's speech at the Berlin Wall, so I can tell my audience that I will use this to provide background to that speech and help everybody understand exactly why Reagan was there to deliver that speech on that day. I've answered all five of the questions. Who's the author? Who is the publisher? What is the main idea or purpose? What evidence is provided? And how does this support my particular research project? If you present these answers to a teacher or professor, that teacher or professor understands very clearly what the resource is and how you intend to use it. But the final step of research activity number four is writing a paragraph. Take the answers to all of those questions and write them in a sentence-based paragraph like this one. I'll read. a and &E Television Networks, a cable network devo devoted to producing documentary programming, published Cold War on their history website. This web page explains the history of the Cold War, including detailed sections on the post-World War II era, Atomic Age, Red Scare, and Space Age. It provides evidence through simple facts and quotations. It also provides many links, but those links most directly, mostly direct the reader to other history web pages. This web page will help me provide general background on the Cold War leading up to Reagan's visit to Germany. Notice that these sentences are simply sentence-based formations of the answers above. Let's take a look in detail. First, I identify the author or publisher who they are and what they produced. This first sentence tells who A&E Television Networks are and what exactly they have published. It is important to include the title. Be sure to include the title of the resource. Next, in this sentence, I explain what the resource provides. Actually, I explain what information the resource provides. In these next two sentences, I discuss the evidence of the resource, including the type of evidence and presence or absence of external links. My final sentence, I explain how this resource will help me in my project. Done. It's one paragraph, relatively short, that is packed with information. Follow these steps. Answer all five of these questions, and after you've answered, write a paragraph summary you will find space for you to work under the student work heading. Make sure to include your web resource link, answer the questions in these bullets, and then write the paragraph summary below.